Hello guys, we are here at the tree farm where uh, we built it up last episode and yeah, you can see there are endermen around here in the end. Uh, so our peaceful mob switch is broken in 1.5.2, sadly. Uh, maybe I will find a way to fix it, but uh, for now we have to deal with the endermen or light up the island. But well, I let's get uh, back to the wood farm over here. As you can see, I added a cobblestone generator to it. And we should just turn it on. See the wizard breaking a few uh, blocks of cobblestone. And I also changed the um, item pickup back here, so the items now drop into water streams and get transported to over here. Before I had um, just go up there. I had hoppers in there, but uh, yeah, the hoppers were too slow. Yeah, let me just turn off the cobblestone generator again. So I had uh, hoppers around here, but when we were using the tree farm at full speed or the cobblestone generator even faster then these hoppers weren't fast enough to pick up all the items. Also a few people asked uh, if items could get stuck on this block. You can see at the moment there are items on it but as soon as new blocks get pushed in they get pushed down to the side so uh, they won't get stuck there for very really long. And also as you can see the wizard is still in there. I reloaded the world a few times and walked away and came back. So this thing is safe, I would say, and the wizard can stay there. Let's, um, oops, leave the cobblestone generator running a little bit, and I will show you uh, the mechanics of it. So, so I turned it on over here. Uh, we got this um, this clock with three tick repeaters, which is uh, then the signal sen uh, sent into this piston here. Um, which is just shorting the pulse, so as soon as the piston gets powered it uh, moves up, but this repeater still got a, a one tick pulse, and that's um, so the pistons don't push too long and the new cobblestone can generate. So um, yeah, these pistons down here, or down here there's a there's first cobblestone generator and these pistons move the blocks up, and then uh, these pistons here trigger with uh, one extra delay. Let me just get up there so I can show you. Um, so here, th this repeater is on two ticks delay, the repeater down there is on one tick. And also we got uh, more pistons up here and they, on, they are on, on one tick as well. So um, at first the pistons from um, down here and from up there push and then these push uh, pistons push the blocks uh, into the area where the wizard is so he can break it. And we got quite a lot of cobblestone already. Yeah, of course I will later uh, build hoppers on this thing, we won't have to pick it up uh, by hand all the time, but uh, yeah, for now it's, it's just like that. So um, yeah, here from the side you can see how these cobblestone generators uh, work, uh, it's, it's nothing new, it's just um, the water flowing down to the side and then lava flowing into the water, um, uh, fed out of my face enderman flowing into the water um, here in this layer, so the, the uh, gap down here is needed so the water is not flowing into the lava and creating obsidian. Same thing up there, just with uh, downward spacing pistons. And back here I wired it with some half slap wiring. Mm. So, yeah, let's turn it off again. Um, as I said, in here I replaced the um, the hoppers with uh, these water streams and there are just two water source blocks, uh, one back there and one there, so that it's uh, creating this centered water stream. And also I left the piston in uh, down here, so if we would kill the wizard or uh, something would happen to him, we could just move this block down and spawn a new one in without having to um, yeah, do anything else around here. So let's get out here again. Um, yeah, also I got a, a few uh, cobblestone already. <laughs> These chests from the wizard just to test the system a little bit. And I would say that's that is it from here for now. Of course, we will have to clean it up someday, but uh, I, I don't have built anything uh, back here on the item output yet because I want to uh, be able to directly access it from down here and it should be a little bit fancier. But yeah, I don't know how to build it yet, so we will do it uh, later. 
Um, yeah, let's get to uh, to the next project today, and that's a mushroom farm. So I see you at the base. All right, so here we are at the Oracle, and you may wonder why would we need a mushroom farm? And to be honest, mainly for symmetry reasons. You see, we got the elevator on the uh, right side there, and nothing on the left over here. But yeah, as you can see, I already started there. Um, in the same footprint as uh, elevator, we will fit a mushroom farm. It won't be the most efficient one, and uh, also, I mean, where's a big use in mushroom farms? It's nice to have brown mushrooms for instant damage potions, but we got uh, no need for so many. Um, yeah, anyways, so uh, yeah, as I said, the main reason is just uh, that this thing has two pillars instead of one. Um, and we'll start building it down here. I connected it to the um, to the base down here, so we can easily access the area. And um, the mushroom farm will look like this in here. We will have two mycelium blocks on this side, and two on this. Then on one side we will place uh, three soul sand, and um, the rest will be filled in with snow like this. Or with any other block, doesn't need to be snow. So that's the shape. And um, then we're gonna place one sign at, uh, yeah, let's place it here, at uh, this side, and no at this side. Like uh, this side will have a hole here. Um, now the mushrooms will be on the uh, mycelium there, and the only reason we use mycelium there is uh, that it's easier to build it at daytime, because um, yeah, at daytime you couldn't place mushrooms on snow blocks. At the moment I can because yeah, there's not much light light from up there reaching down, but um, further up it will get annoying when we build there. So. Um, that's why we have mycelium blocks there. We could an use anything else uh, there as well. So um, now to understand the reason for the soul sand, um, first the mushrooms will uh, now from there spread into the um, center eventually and yeah be spread out here. And um, to harvest them, we will later let water flow down like this. And um, yeah, now it's pretty dark. Uh, if there wasn't soul sand here. Um, the items would get pushed. Let me just, uh, yeah, I have no torches. Let me just get a few torches. Somewhere here. Yep. So. Yeah, come on. There we go. So, if we now have water there, the uh, mushrooms would pop out and get pushed uh, into this hole here and drop down so we could collect them. But the problem if is if there wouldn't be soul sand here, items which uh, land for example back there um, would get pushed onto the blocks where the mushrooms are at the moment. Now I uh, picked it up again. You can see at the moment it's not getting pushed out there because the soul sand is a bit little bit lower than the mycelium back here. Let me just uh, change the blocks for something else. Let's say we use mycelium there as well, and if I would now throw an item on there, you can see it gets pushed along there, and then it stops back there on the mushroom blocks. Oh, I picked it up accidentally. Yeah, but again, you can see it gets stuck there, and we can uh, collect it. So um, yeah, let's place the soul sense there again. There we go. And um, now uh, we of course want several layers of this thing. So we would build the next layer on top of here. Then um, this time we switch it around. So we got snow on this side where the soul sand was before and we got the um, soul sand on the other side where the snow was before. Mm, and now we at first need to get up. Like this. And now also, uh, before we place the sign back there, now we place one over here. So the, the reason for that is, let me just place the mushrooms and then I will show you. Um, 
if we now place the water source up here, it will uh, fl flow. Uh, it, it will move all the mushroom items from up here into this hole. And um, then, let me just place a water source there. Um, then the water will flow down and uh, collect all the mushrooms from the uh, lower layer as well and let them drop down here. And um, yeah, we conti can continue this pattern and um, alternate where the signs are and um, build it up to the top. And then we can hook the, uh, the water um, up to a day-night sensor or something like that. And um, every so often water will flush the whole system and uh, push all the items down. And um, yeah, we can collect them down there with hoppers on these uh, two spots. Of course we have to keep the water on long enough so that the items can even on the soul sand uh, reach the, the drop before the water turns off again. Um, yeah, but that's the principle of this mushroom farm. Maybe also um, the reason why this elevator tower um, shape is fitting really nice for a mushroom farm um, is before a mushroom grows, like let's say this mushroom would like to grow, it will check um, four blocks to all sides, so uh, there, there, there and there and also to the other sides um, and also over here, like four blocks to this side, this side, this side, this side and also one block down and one block up. If there are other mushrooms of the same kind in the area and if there are um, five or more mushrooms of the same kind uh, in the area, it will not grow a new one. It also counts itself, so it will always count one. And um, if we would place like three more uh, brown mushrooms over here, it uh, would count one, two, three, four. That's less than five, so it can grow another one. Let's say it would grow one over here. Or let's move this one uh, to the side, so there's still a spot where it can grow a new mushroom. And if now this mushroom would um, count the mushrooms in the area, it um, yeah would count five and not try to grow a new one over here. Um, so that's uh, also why this uh, tower is fitting nice, because it's four blocks space in between the two sides. So these mushrooms over here, and these ones over here, don't um, count th themselves uh, to the thing. So this mushroom here is not counting uh, the brown mushroom over there to, the, uh, to this five mushroom limit. And uh, yeah, therefore that's a nice distance. And um, also the tower shape is of course nice because um, as I said, it's counting one block up and one block down, but if it's counting one block up and one block down down in this um, layout, it will uh, yeah only have the solid blocks here and no other mushrooms, and on the layer on top there would be solid blocks again only. So um, yeah, the, the layers don't interfere. Mm. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. Maybe um, if you want to know more about how the mushrooms grow, like um, when this mushroom is picked, it picks, of course, one of these spots to grow a new mushroom, or it even could grow a mushroom over here, I think. It's uh, yeah a little bit uh, more complicated how it, how it picks the spot where it grows, and I think Cabo PC made a, a nice video about mushroom farming a while ago where he ex explains it pretty well, so I will put a link in the description if you want to know more about mushroom farming. Um, but other than that, I uh, will just uh, build this thing up now and yeah, hopefully we'll have a chance to try it out later. So let's go!
And there we go, the mushroom farm is done. You can see there are already a few mushrooms grown in there. And um, also, I built the redstone inside the oracle already. And that was the worst part because, uh, as you probably know, there's water inside the oracle. And I had to build the redstone uh, underwater and also had to make sure that there are no air blocks um, inside the redstone. So, yeah, we got the dragon axe there so it can teleport into the redstone and break. Um, but yeah, th uh, the input signal for the uh, mushroom farm comes fro from up here. Um, on top of this block there's a redstone which is then connected to a uh, daylight sensor on top. At the moment it's daytime, so it's turned on. Um, then over here we got a pulse shorter. And um, yeah, the output signal is here. And then gets transmitted down with this uh, torch tower thing and gets into this thing down here uh, where you can't really see much because I had it to um, close this, uh, it off so it's not getting flooded by the water but um, it's pretty much just a pulse lengther uh, which makes sure that um, this piston here uh, we dragged for long enough that the water can flow uh, down into the mushroom farm and destroy all the mushrooms and push them down. Like this is uh, the co one corner where the water flows down of the mushroom farm. And um, yeah, also at the moment I got this uh, lever in here to override um, the the normal uh, triggering from the daylight sensor. So I can show uh, show it to you how the farm triggers. And I think we should just uh, do that now. We should um, click this lever, and um, now I also got a button up here, uh, which is only working at night. Uh, I just realized. Anyways, um, if I remove this repeater and replace it again, um, we will trigger the system. And let's go down. Let's see if we can still see it. Uh yeah, you see the piston is now retracted and the water is flowing down into the mushroom farm. And after a delay, like 10 seconds, uh, which is done by this part of firing here, um, it moves out again and cuts off the water. And now we can go down and pick up the mushrooms. But also I want to try if we can... Oh, yes, there are still mushrooms in there. Um, because the water is not flown down all the way. Maybe if we wait here, uh, we can see how these mushrooms get destroyed. Let's wait a little bit and see where the water is. It should be coming down somewhere there. Ah, yeah, there we go. See, the mushrooms pop out and then uh, they get flooded into the corners here. There you can see a mushroom item and drop down. Um, Alright, so... Then if we go down here we can pick them up in these two spots here. Let's just get some space in the inventory. Wow! Yay! That's quite a lot of mushrooms. I uh, went AFK a little bit b before I started uh, recording the second part here, so I guess from the usual day-night uh, cycle we wouldn't get so many mushrooms, but um, yeah, since it's uh, triggering every day uh, we will still get a lot. And also maybe you noticed I got more brown mushrooms than red ones and um, that's because I uh, placed the brown mushrooms there where they have three blocks to grow to while the red mushrooms only got two blocks. So it's more likely that the brown mushroom grows here. Um, yeah, but now I uh, um, want to connect this uh, thing here to a chest. Let's just uh, put a chest over here. And uh, we'll connect it with hoppers. So as soon as new mushrooms uh, drop down, they will get picked up uh, by the hoppers and transported into the chest. There we go. And yeah, then we can maybe have a double chest here instead. Let's put another one on top. And have half of the double chest filled up with brown mushrooms and the other half with uh, red mushrooms. So we got some sorted already. And there we go. That's uh, our mushroom farm. More mushrooms here, let's put them in there as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the building project for today. 
Uh, I guess it went fairly quick. Um, but also I thought about building a real storage room, uh, something better than the thing down there. And um, I have no clean design for it yet, I have no real idea how to build it yet, uh, to be honest, but um, I got some ideas uh, for item sorting and I want to share them with you, so I will uh, prepare a little bit of stuff and uh, yeah, then get over into a test area and show you what I've been up to. Alright, so here we are and I built a few sorting systems up here. Um, the first one over here is just a normal uh, filter sorter, so we got the hopper there with our items blocking the slots and one item that should get sorted in there. And if we throw items uh, in up here, um, all the items end uh, up on the other side. Only uh, the items which can stack to this filter item in here will go down. Um, so the downside with these um, sorters is we can only sort items which are stackable and uh, which got exactly the same NBT tags and metadata and item ID as the item in the filter. So if we would have uh, renamed uh, emeralds, they wouldn't stack to it. Um, and I thought about ways how we could sort items uh, without t uh, having this exact uh, match, um, like sorting them after categories. And um, yeah, that's uh, one thing I came up with over here. Um, let me just show you what happens if I throw a few random items in there. Let's see. Um, so you hear a burning out torch, but that's not affecting the system. It's updating itself all the time. Um, so now in the top chest, we got these items. And down here, we got these items. So you can see um, all the... And yeah, one item is stuck in there. It will get out as soon as a new item comes in. Let's just throw more in. So um, yeah, down here in the chest, you see all the stackable items. And up here, all the non-stackable ones. It's um, useful, for example, uh, the, the normal filter sorters, like the one we got over there, only work with stackable items, of course. So you could have a sorter like this uh, in front of the um, normal sorting system, in front of the f uh, filter sorters, to sort out all the non-stackable items, which can be sorted by it anyways. So, um, yeah, that could uh, speed up the process. If you have two of these hoppers uh, in front of it, then you only sort the items that can be sorted with this thing, and not the non-stackable ones. But, um, yeah, I got more. Uh, over here, uh, this system is a potion sorter. It sorts out uh, all potions. You can see there's this uh, dropper here facing at the brewing stand. And every time an item gets in there, it will try to shoot the item into the brewing stand. And it can only shoot potions in. Well, I guess it could also shoot nether ward or let's just try it with gunpowder. Probably could also shoot gunpowder in. No, apparently it can't. Cool. Um, yeah, but you could uh, easily lock this uh, slot with a very named nether ward or something like that. Anyways, if I now throw in um, some random items over here um, and we wait till they went through, we got all the potions in here. And all the other stuff in here. Let's just throw in some some other things. So yeah, you can see all the potions end up in uh, in this hopper below the brewing stand, and the other things in here. Um, but that's not on the only um, way you can use uh, this kind of sorter. Let me just break the brewing stand and replace it with a beacon. Because now it's uh, what I like to call a valuable sorter. So um, let's just throw in some random stuff again. Uh, yeah, it's full. So, and it's processing again. Same concept as with the brewing stand, it's trying to shoot the items in here. And yeah, it's not stopping at the moment. Oh no, it's just, it's just transporting a lot of items. So, um, yeah, it's trying to shoot the items in here, and in the beacon only uh, emeralds, diamonds, gold, and iron can uh, enter the slot. So uh, these items end up down here. I actually haven't thrown in the iron, let's do that. And um, every other item will end up down here. 
I hope I haven't messed it up now since I uh, had this hopper full. Of course there would be some chest or something below here so uh, that these hoppers don't fill up. No, but it worked fine. You can see all the valuables are in here. Mm, I, I guess it's also cool because um, usually you don't have a chest of diamonds or a chest of emeralds or a chest of gold. Maybe iron you have but um, yeah it's not really worth having uh, a single chest for each of these items with a single sorter so you could just have one sorter and then have uh, a chest where you got all your valuables valuables are uh, in of course except ex uh, it's expensive with the beacon but uh, still pretty cool i think and that's uh, not it yet we can use this thing in another way um let me just change it this time we have to break the uh, dropper and replace it with a dispenser and then we have to place a a thing I don't have on me right now actually I think we can use a door as well ah let's let's do it with the uh, with a sign um there we go so if you now place a sign there um this thing is also sorting uh these hoppers are empty now they are and um yeah I don't have all the things I need on me again. There we go. Because now uh, it's sorting out flint and steels. Um, so, yeah, since this is a dispenser, it's important that not the wrong things enter this thing. Actually, let's uh, get back there. I uh, labeled it here in the chest. I put all the items. A dispenser shoots out differently. Um, there are three things missing. So over here I wanted to put a uh, experience bottle, but uh, I got no luck with getting the right villagers. And um, then also I don't have spawn eggs of course, because you can't get them in survival. And uh, also armor got a special behavior when it got shot out of a dispenser, but that's not important for us at the moment, because that is only involving the player. Um, yeah, but the point uh, uh, I'm trying to make here is um, we got, for example, fire charges, TNT, or firework rockets. And if these things get into a dispenser, they will uh, shoot out, or arrows as well. And TNT would e even blow up the uh, machine. So we don't want uh, these things to get into this thing. Uh, but luckily, we have the stack size sorter. And all these things up here are stackable, so w they would uh, get sorted out by the stack size sorter before. And we only throw non-stackable items into the sorter down there. And um, yeah, the other problem are splash potions, they would also get destroyed. But uh, yeah, we can y uh, sort them out with the potion sorter before. So the only items we have to worry about are uh, these uh, lava buckets, water buckets, um, f flint and steels is what we want to sort, and minecarts and boats. Um, and all these things work fine. Let me just show you. Um, let's throw in a flint and steel. Uh, oh, that was a potion. Why didn't the potion splash? Oh, I thought potions would uh, would shoot out. Let's wait. Actually, was it the flint and steel I threw in there before? Oh yeah. Oh, the behavior of po potions is different than I thought. I thought they would shoot out, but apparently they don't. Well, if we throw in other items, uh, let's just continue here with it. No, actually it's messed up and I know why. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I forgot to uh, to rebuild the thing correctly. Ah, but it saved us a potion. Um, so we don't want to throw potions in there, they would get destroyed. So yeah, this rail on top of here needs to update their um, dispenser, otherwise it won't trigger. So if we now uh, throw in the flint and steel, it uh, lands on the hopper down here. And if we throw in anything else, let's say let's throw in some these random things. Uh, we got the flint and steels and the hopper down here and the other stuff uh, over here. And yeah, as I said, we don't throw in potions there usually by sorting them out of a potion sorter before and we don't throw in uh, stackable stuff. Mm. Yeah, the thing is, uh, when a dispenser tries to shoot out a flint and steel, it will ignite the block in front, but if there is a sign or anything else blocking it, then um, it's not even using the flint and steel and not uh, shooting it out, it's just uh, staying in the dispenser. So that's why this thing is working. Now I think I should uh, try to show you how to build uh, up this and this thing he over here, so you can use it. Um, 
but at first I want to sleep through the night so no mobs attack me okay now let's start with the stack size sorter um, we need blocks for it there we go so you can see it pretty nicely over here um, it's not that complicated we just need uh, the chests where we want to sort the items in let's place them over here then we need uh, two hoppers facing into the chests and uh, the top hopper will be the one where we uh, will input the items like from over here then um, we need a half slab uh, which is placed as an upside down half slab on the lower hopper and uh, on top of there we got a comparator which is getting a signal if there is a item in the top hopper um, then where is my redstone there we go then we need to uh, wire this thing with redstone like this and um, oh, my inventory is a real mess at the moment and we need a block over here um, back here we need a torch so uh, the, the signal, is, uh, the inverted signal from there is coming into uh, this redstone line and uh, also on top of here we need a block on top of the comparator and let me just get up there we need redstone on top of here and uh, other torch um, on the side here like this and that's the whole thing uh, the way it works is um, if a normal item or <laughs> uh, a, a non-stackable item uh, is coming in there it's uh, getting a stronger signal from this comparator and um, it's powering this redstone and this redstone directly from the comparator like without the torch let me just uh, show you if I remove this chest I can yeah let's just break it with the hand if I remove this chest and for example put a door in there actually that didn't work because yeah of course it's sucking it out directly yeah uh, let's just break this hopper if I put now a door in there you can see uh, this signal is strong enough to power these uh, two redstone here and uh, will then lock the, the lower hopper here so it's not sucking out the door and uh, yeah, before this uh, is happening, the torch back here is making sure it's uh, it's blocked. And um, yeah, if there's a, a normal item coming in, the torch will turn off, but the redstone signal, which is directly coming from the hopper, won't be strong enough to um, move it into uh, t to to uh, make it to the hopper. So after a one tick delay, after the torch went off, the hopper will um, will be unpowered and suck out the item. And then we got also the torch up there to to lock the other hopper. Um, so we just fix it by placing the chest there again. And yeah, we also should try it out again. Let's throw a few random things in there. Sorting, sorting, sorting. And there we go. Non-stackables. Stackables. Yeah, that's a stackable uh, sorter. Um, let's get over to the other one. To the potion slash valuable slash uh, flint and steel sorter. Maybe we can use it for other things as well. I haven't thought about it too much yet. So, um, I will build it up for potions because I think that's uh, the main use for it. Do I got the brewing stand on me? Of course not. Wait, I, I got it on me before. Oh, I, I left it in the sorter here. So, um, yeah, we start with the two hoppers and then uh, place a dropper on top of one of the hoppers facing in the direction of the other one. And in front of the dropper we place the brewing stand. And, um, yeah, then behind it, um, let me just place a few blocks here. Behind it we place uh, a block and a comparator facing away from the dropper and a block in front of the uh, comparator then we need the redstone torch over here redstone down here, a repeater on the first delay or on 
non-delay uh, in here and um, yeah redstone on top of here and then really important the power rail uh, the, the uh, activator rail or a powered rail would work as well but uh, some rail which uh, can or a piston would also work S something that updates the um, dropper because it only gets a butt signal from this uh, diagonal block here so it's not triggering directly and the rail is updating it so it uh, tries to shoot the item out so um, now on the side of the uh, dropper we can input the items and um, now we need some additional wiring on the side here to make sure that this uh, thing doesn't get fed to uh, with items too fast because it's uh, not quite the speed of one hopper it's a little bit slower so um, what we do is we place a block on the side of the um, hopper here and um, then a block next to the repeater down here and on top of this block we place redsto redstone so um, this redstone will get powered from the comparator now we don't want it to connect with this one so we place a block here and also this uh, gives us a nice chance that we get the redstone signal from here which is also from the comparator and um, have a two tick delay in here and also locks the hopper with it. So when an item gets in there, the hopper will directly get locked, and then after two ticks, uh, yeah, it will be uh, free to to move items again. And yeah, that's uh, it already here. Now we should be able to uh, sort potions. Yeah, I have put a dropper in there. So let's go. It's processing the items. We see the normal stuff here and potions over here. It's working nice. Mm, and I would say uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.